Okay, boys. It was a nice night, but I gotta call it quits. My wife's waiting for me, and this delivery ain't gonna deliver itself. I throw a 20 on the counter to pay for my two rum and cokes and my food, and then I exit the bar. Staggering out of this crass establishment, I light up a cigarette and stare at the sky. At the moment I exhale my first drag, a police car enters the parking lot, and all I can do is nod at them silently, hoping they won't make me pass an alcohol test. I doubt I'm really all the way over the line, but two rum and cokes in less than an hour, I, without a doubt, would cross it. And fortunately for me, it seems like the boys were up to the same deal, because they only nod back and get inside without much conversation. I take it as my cue to leave before they change their mind, throwing the butt of my cigarette to the ground. I walk through the parking lot, my boots heavy, stomping loudly on the concrete as I try to make a straight line to my truck. I'm alright, maybe just a little tipsy, but nothing dramatic. I have a few energy drinks in my small fridge, I just might drink one to give myself the necessary energy to keep driving through the night. Besides, there wouldn't be another stop before the sun would rise and I know this route like the back of my hand, and I know there's no policeman lying in wait to ambush poor truckers with one or two drinks behind the tie. Wait, there's no stop for a few hours. So, with class and dignity, I unzip my fly once I'm hidden by my truck's bright red cabin and piss my body weight in liquid just to make sure I won't have to stop on the side of the road. But once I'm done, I climb in, turn on the lights, and revel in the sweet sound of an energy drink can opening. Bringing the can to my lips, I frown a little as the overly sweet liquid passes over my tongue. I'm not that fond of sweets, but all these things taste like crushed candies. No matter what the brand, they're so full of sugar they have the same taste to me. Once my monster can's locked in the cup holder, I turn the engine on. The truck roars to life, and I put the radio on. It's going to be a very long and silent night through the Midwest. I'm about 50 miles past Lincoln, Nebraska, and Tulsa. Oklahoma is still pretty far. If I drive straight without a pause... It might take me a little under six hours to get there. Not even twenty minutes on the road, and I feel my stomach grumbling something fierce. And I instantly regret those twelve spicy chicken wings I had back at the bar. I take a swig of my monster to try and see if it can pass, and it does. However, the fart that comes next is a killer. Even as I roll down my window... I would classify it as a wind of mass destruction, a potential chemical explosion that should have never been unleashed in this cabin. God, it took about four minutes for me to stop smelling and tasting it on my tongue. My stomach hurts a little, and I carefully take a mental note not to eat chicken wings from a shoddy bar anymore. I might just be too delicate for that. About an hour into my drive, I finally put the cruise control on and leaned back a little. This was mostly going to be a straight line for the next three hours, so as long as I keep an eye on the road here and there, well, I should be fine. I pick up my tablet and start playing some Angry Birds to pass the time. It's at this moment that I hear a loud bang on my door and drop my tablet to the floor. I unlocked the cruise control and stopped the truck to see what hit me, but whatever did had no chance. Truck door one, random animal zero. It was probably a bird that was flying too low or something. As I escape the cabin, I hear the cracking sounds of branches being stepped on on the other side of the truck, 
and I wonder how in the hell the thing survived at the speed I was driving. I look at the driver's door, and I'm legitimately shocked. There's a dent in it, about four inches wide by six in length. Somewhat like an oval, it's like something headbutted it, which makes me wonder even more how something could move after that. Another surprising element is the lack of blood. Neither on the cabin, though it would be hard to see in the dark since the cabin's red, nor on the asphalt. I reopen my door and get a flashlight from under my seat and stare at the dent. It's an almost perfect oval, nothing that would look like a regular impact. It was almost as if the metal bent perfectly at the edge of whatever hit it. Strange feeling climbs down the length of my spine, and I shiver instantly. We're in the goddamn Midwest. It's maybe 86 degrees right now, and I'm shivering. I flash around to see something, and then move in front of my truck to flash the flashlight in the woods, but there's nothing to find. Whatever hit me, carved a perfect oval with their head, survived, and ran into the woods. It's too late in the night for me to care anymore. I'll just make my report once I reach Tulsa. Climbing back in my cabin, I light up another cigarette and drink another sip of my monster. I throw the flashlight on the passenger seat and anxiously stare at the woods one last time, looking for something. But I see nothing. Shrugging, I restart the engine and start driving away. Not even five minutes after I started to drive, my eyes caught movement in the woods, but I can't believe what I am seeing. Man, I must be tipsier than I thought. Or maybe those chicken wings were infected and I'm having some sort of salmonella hallucinations. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I can't think of any reason why my eyes would deceive me like that. Reaching for my radio, I tried to call on to someone. Is there anyone on the line? I'm on the 75 South on my way to Tulsa. I haven't seen a friendly car in a while. It's dark as shit and there's something weird running along the road. I swallow heavily and try again. There's anyone on the line. Uh, let me know. Uh, do you copy? No answers. Of course not. Most truck drivers were sleeping in the back of their cabin at this point. It's way past 3 a.m. in the darkest of the night. Nobody in their right mind was driving except me, of course. My stomach grumbles again, and a cramp forces me to tear my eyes off the woods momentarily, but the image is burnt behind my eyelids. There was something running along the road. It was running at the speed of my truck, and I was easily going over 70 miles an hour. It looked humanoid, but I can't be sure. If my eyes aren't deceiving me, it's got goat horns the size of antlers and hooves instead of feet. It's also easily seven feet tall and incandescent gold and red eyes. I'm not sure which because I can only see its form because of my lights. Since it's pretty dark, I can't say for sure what I've seen. Another shiver ran down the length of my spine, and when I looked back to the woods, it was gone. I heave out a sigh and take another sip of Monster. I'm not really thirsty, but at this point, I really want to stay awake until the next stop. And then all of a sudden, BANG! This time, it's the passenger's door that's hit. I yell in surprise and reach for the flashlight. I lock the cruise control. Fuck stopping this time. Whatever's outside and hitting the cabin doesn't want me on the road. Obviously. 
I managed to square my way to the passenger seat, and I flashed the flashlight outside, but all I could see is another perfect oval in the passenger side mirror. There's nothing stuck to my door. No blood. Nothing. Just a huge ass dent. I hear another loud banging coming from the roof, and I see the ceiling slowly descend toward me as if something heavy was crushing it. I punch the roof and yell at whatever it was that's on the roof to get the hell off, and then the sound was gone. When I turned to look back at the woods, there it was. Its darkened, clawed fingers are holding on to my mirror and the goddamn handle to get into the cabin, and it's staring at me from the other side of the window. Small, uneven, blazing red and yellow eyes peer at me from the other side of the window, and all I can do is stare at the beast, dumbfounded, as if I was facing Satan itself. Its face is covered in wiry hair, and the color of its skin is bony, to describe it at best. It's so white, I can almost see the veins traveling under its skin. And around those insanely glowing eyes, there are dark circles that suggest the beast know not what sleep is. And then, it smiles. It smiles at me with this beastly razor-sharp teeth, and I don't think about it twice, and I reach for the gun hidden in the glove compartment, and I shoot at it, breaking the window. I hear an inhuman, disembodied screech and a series of loud bangs as if the evil creature was rolling down the side of the truck. I get back behind the wheel and stare at my side mirrors, trying to find its body on the ground behind as I drive. But there isn't any. I pick up my radio again, and in a panic, I call for help. Uh, is there anyone on the line? Do you copy? My voice is shaking, my hands are trembling, and I'm about ready to shit myself. I'm being fucking attacked by some sort of beast here. And then... A loud scratching sound has me dropping the radio and reaching for my gun again. I could feel my heartbeat in my throat and my stomach's only getting worse. I'm building an ulcer in there, but right now, it's the last of my worries. The ceiling started to descend on me, and this time, I didn't think twice before shooting. I shot once, twice, and then something green splashes over the windshield as the beast's otherworldly scream tear through the atmosphere. Seconds later, its sharp claws are tearing through the metal of the roof, and its screech is so loud my eardrums are burning. Even as I press my palms against the side of my head to dampen the noise, it's piercing through my flesh and bones and resonating straight inside my head. I could feel sweat cover my forehead, and my blood rushing in my every limb, as the monster keeps clawing away at the ceiling of my cabin like it's paper, its blade-sharp claws making quick work of it. I let go of the wheel, and feel blood pouring out of my head, sliding disgustingly down the side of my cheeks and the length of my neck before it soaks into my vest. I reach for my gun, which I had happened to drop during the loud screeching, and I can barely hear anything else. But I realize quickly that the roof of my cabin has all been torn to shreds. I aim at the monster which is perched atop the trailer, staring at me with its grotesque, disgustingly, terrifying smile. And I shoot. I empty the chambers entirely and watch as most of the bullets hit the thing right in its chest, blood pouring all over me, the cabin, and the rest of the broken windshield in the trailer. 
God, why won't it just die? In a desperate attempt to do something, I throw my empty gun at it, knock my elbow on the steering wheel as I reel back and watch in horror as it keeps smirking at me with its blazing yellow and red eyes. Its smirk stretches Glasgow smile style, and a disgustingly long tongue escapes its mouth before sliding against its lips. And after that, it's a commotion of noises, pain, and blood. I catch the sound of metal collapsing, of my bones breaking, and blood pouring out of my body. I pass out before I can realize it, and when I wake up, I'm in an overly white room that smells like antiseptic, and my wife is bent over me, looking at me with a kind smile. I hadn't seen that smile in a long time, and I quickly realized that she's been crying too. Her eyes are red, puffy, and her hand that isn't clenched around my own is clamped tightly around a bunch of tissues. I feel relieved, until I realize that my hands are cuffed to the hospital bed. My eyes instantly shot up toward my wife, questioning, and she lowers her head shamefully. You were drunk driving again. Drunk? No, I only had a couple of drinks, and some energy drinks that had no alcohol. It's wrong. I wasn't drunk. I was attacked. God, didn't they see the blood on the cabin and the trailer? Green blood. There was no way that they could mix something like that up. They said they needed a lot of tools to get you out of the cabin. There's almost nothing left of that truck. I tried to speak, but my voice just won't come up. And I realize quickly that it's because my head is wrapped tightly in a plaster. Probably a full body, but I can't bend to look at myself. I want to ask about the creature, and strangely enough, the fingers of my left hand can move. My wife passes me a pen and a board so I can write what I want to say. And apparently, this arm was less damaged than the rest of my body. And so I wrote, where's the creature on the board? And she looks at me, empty. Her brows furrowed for a second. And I write again. I asked for help on the radio. And this time, she looks at me resentfully. They received your message and the police came. But there was no sign of a creature. They said you fell asleep and were dreaming. That you alone crashed that truck. There was nothing, Matt. Do you understand? And I write again. That's a lie. But it's obvious she doesn't believe me. No one will. And now that it's over, can I even believe myself?